Chapter 30, Human Alteration of the Biosphere. Section 30.1, Species Extinction Crisis. Human Alteration of the Biosphere. So uh, humans um, originated on the savannas of Africa about a quarter of a million years ago. Um, and humans were quite different than any other organism found on our planet because they were able to understand uh, how things worked and were able to use that knowledge to create technology. So, you know, we, we've got building of tools, uh, weapons, uh, but probably the most important technology that humans created uh, was technology the technology of domesticating uh, plants and animals to create more food. And this started about 10,000 years ago. And we refer to um, humans uh, creating uh, advancements in agriculture, uh, the agricultural revolution. So we're going from, uh, you know, previous humans uh, uh, being hunting and gatherers, uh, killing animals with weapons, uh, gathering roots and berries and other types of foods for consumption, to a situation where they were now controlling the production of uh, their food uh, through the planting of crops and by uh, raising uh, animals. So uh, this domestication of plants and animals led to a big increase in the availability of food for humans and probably was responsible for the development of stable uh, settlements and uh, radical changes to the society that humans lived in. So as I said, with agriculture came the ability to create settlements. Um, the human population um, 10,000 years ago was probably about a couple million individuals. Um, early agriculture what was more or less uh, subsidence. Uh, they were, uh, humans were growing enough food to feed the members of their group. Uh, but this changed about 7,000 years ago with the advent of the plow, because now they could cultivate large areas of land uh, and grow crops. And this led to an increase in the number of people that the settlements, uh, the human settlements, uh, could uh, have. By about 1800 AD, there was about 1 billion humans, and they were basically being supported by the expansion of cropland and the development of techniques to raise uh, livestock. So here we can see uh, the change in the human population uh, in terms of size between 10,000 BC and 2100 AD. So the 2100 AD are forecasts about uh, how uh, uh, large the human population will be by the end of this century. Uh, so we can see that, that there, there is this big uptake about um, 3,000 years ago. Uh, uh, population started growing much more quickly. And in the last 200 years, we see an exponential rise in the human population. So this graph here focuses in on the time period from 1 to 2100 AD. Uh, those little dips in there, some of those are the Black Plague and, and other um, factors that cause a reduction in, in the human population, usually disease-oriented. Uh, today, uh, the human population is, is over uh, 7.6 billion, so I show an estimate for, for 2018. And um, as I said, the, the increase in, in the size of the human population uh, from 1 billion about, uh, about uh, 18, uh, during the year 1800 to its current size, which is about eight times greater, was basically related to uh, our sort of exploitation of habitats to grow crops. So here we can see the proportion of land covered by cropland in 1800. Uh, so large parts of uh, Eurasia, uh, China, um, India and, and parts of Africa and uh, the uh, eastern United States and Canada. Um, another important aspect in producing food was uh, the Industrial Revolution because with the Industrial Revolution we even uh, um, put more technology into uh, producing 
crops, and more importantly, we 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 learned how to uh, put these the, you know the, the the products of, of food production into cans. Uh, we, we we were a much a much better at at uh, uh, providing this foodstuffs uh, to uh, consumers uh, by either freezing it, refrigerating it, putting it in cans, uh, 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 transporting it quickly to uh, centers where you could buy this food in supermarkets. This was uh, a really big thing. Um, the Industrial Revolution, as I said, caused uh, technological, social, economic, and cultural changes for humans. And uh, the Industrial Revolution uh, brought on a society that, that was based on consumerism. And uh, this consumerism led to significant environmental degradation because of resource use and the pollution that was created to uh, produce these products. Um, so the human population grows to about 6 billion by 1999. And now what I'm going to show you is a map of um, the amount of area uh, covered by cropland in 1990. So this is uh, significantly different than what I showed in the previous map. Uh, uh, a, a huge expansion in cropland between uh, 1800 and 1990, and a huge uh, sort of change in how intensively cropped uh, land was. Uh, so not only was land being used for crops, but it was in, in intensive agriculture uh, requiring the use of machines and fertilizer uh, to get the maximum amount of food produced per acre. Uh, currently, human population is around 7.7 uh, .7 billion. Uh, highest growth rates are in Africa and Asia. Uh, growth rates in, in North America and uh, uh, Europe have basically leveled off, um, but still these high populations are, are causing a lot of strain on the biosphere. Uh, we've uh, uh, wiped out uh, large areas of, of natural um, forest and grasslands um, to grow crops, and we've caused the demise of many species because they, they were uh, food species and we decided that we were going to hunt them, some of them to extinction, for example, the, the passenger pigeon. Uh, scientists predict that the population, the human population, may grow to 11 billion by the year 2100, although the latest values are now saying somewhere between 8 and 9. Uh, things are even slowing down in, in uh, Asia and uh, Africa in terms of uh, the population growth rate. Um, Currently, about 1 million species face extinction. Okay, let's learn some more details about um, this current species extinction crisis. So human activity is causing the sixth mass extinction event. Uh, that's what scientists are predicting. Um, the previous five mass extinction events that occurred a, a billion or millions of years in, uh, prior to our existence um, were caused by... Um, uh, natural, the natural environment changing in some way, asteroid impact, uh, climate change uh, over over many millions of years, and so on. Uh, the current extinction rate is about one thousand times greater than the back background extinction rate, and and the background extinction rate is the rate of species going extinct uh, naturally due to natural factors. Um, so the current extinction crisis that you know, hard to date when it started. Sometimes scientists believe about four or five hundred years ago. This is being caused by the activities of humans. And uh, humans can, if they want, uh, reduce the magnitude of this event by making changes in, in the way that we um, interact with the biosphere. So when, when did this extinction crisis begin? Um, we first see the extinction of organisms caused by human activities uh, between 1500 and 1900 AD, and it was mainly occurring on islands. Uh, humans were getting to islands, and uh, the species that existed there were highly endemic. That was their only home, and uh, humans made changes either by hunting or changing the environment in some way that led to the extinction of species. 
Uh, for example, Hawaii lost 23 species of birds. Uh, some of these birds were lost due to the fact of that we introduced uh, uh, rats uh, to uh, the Hawaiian Islands, which ate uh, the um, eggs of these birds, and many of these birds uh, were uh, also flightless, uh, so many of them uh, were lost to uh, another um, um, addition to the Hawaiian Islands, and that was cats. People brought cats over, and, and uh, cats caused the demise of many different bird species on Hawaii. Hawaii is a beautiful place. When you go there, you look at the vegetation, you think, wow, you know, this is tropical rainforest. Uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, Hawaii also has grasslands. Um, but if you went into that tropical rainforest, you would find out that a lot of the species that are there don't belong there. They weren't originally uh, common to the Hawaiian Islands. They were introduced. Uh, for example, bamboo. Bamboo is growing all over the place. It's not a tree species. It's, it's a type of grass. Um, but it, it, it occupies a large portion of the tropical rainforest there. Uh, likewise, a lot of the... Uh, um, Hawaii was a sort of a savanna, uh, tropical rainforest with, with grasslands. Much of the grasslands in, in Hawaii have been removed and are now growing um, uh, foodstuffs like uh, pineapples and sugarcane. Uh, over the last hundred years, the geography of extinctions changed. It moved from islands to continental areas. But still, early on in this period, uh, most of the species that were going extinct were ones that were endemic. So the smaller area that they occupied uh, was uh, detrimental. It was much more easy to cause a species that has a small geographic range uh, to go extinct. If we look at what was causing these, uh, these species to go extinct in the last hundred years, uh, there are a number of factors. There is no one factor responsible. It's, it's multiple factors, and often these factors act together um, and uh, result in the dis disappearance uh, of a species. So, so let's look at some of these uh, factors, these human activities that uh, have caused the demise of, of uh, species, their extinction, or just a, a reduction, a significant reduction in their numbers. So poaching, hunting, and harvesting, uh, many species have died out because of legal or illegal hunting. There, uh, we, can, we can classify hunting as being of three types. Uh, subsistence hunting, killing animals for food. Uh, sport hunting, uh, killing animals for recreation. Or uh, commercial hunting, uh, hunting for profit. The poor passenger pigeon um, uh, was hunted for for all three types. Um, there was once five billion passenger bil uh, pigeons living in North America, and uh, habitat destruction, uh, subsistence hunting. They were they were a tasty bird uh, in in the oven, and sport hunting uh, caused their extinction in less than three hundred years. Um, so poaching is the illegal hunting of wildlife protected by law. Um, usually we put laws in place when we notice that the numbers of a particular species are dwindling to a point where uh, they could become extinct. And an example of one species where uh, laws have been put in place uh, to stop uh, illegal hunting of it are Bengal tigers. Uh, so they're protected by law, but still they're, they're killed because they're highly valued uh, some part of their body is highly valued uh, by individuals that want those parts. Uh, harvesting is the capture of large numbers of individuals uh, from a plant or animal species for the purpose of food consumption or uh, making commercial products. So we harvest trees, uh, we harvest fish in the oceans or fish in the lake, um, and the purpose is for food consumption. Um, we have to be very careful when we're harvesting uh, these organisms because we don't want to cause their numbers to drop too low because then they will not be able to re reproduce fast enough to replace their numbers. When we do this, that's called over-harvesting. Uh, the removal of individuals from a population faster than they are replaced by reproduction. This happened to the cod fishery off the east coast of Canada. So the Bengal tigers uh, face, face extinction mainly because of poaching now, despite a multi-governmental backed protection system that includes fines, uh, jail terms, and even death. So uh, you can get shot killed 
for killing a tiger. Um, in Canada, as I mentioned, uh, we, we caused the over, uh, well, not us, it was, well, it was partially us and other uh, nations that came to our fishing areas. Uh, it was really easy to catch northern cod, and they were catching too many of them. They were catching uh, more uh, than the population could handle in terms of reproduction and replacing the individuals that were lost. And uh, there was two crashes um, in, in their numbers, one occurring in the 1970s, and then finally in 1992, uh, a severe drop in the number of northern cod, and a ban was pay, uh, put in place uh, to stop uh, fishing for this species. Sometimes species uh, die off because we introduce alien or foreign species um, or invasive species to a habitat. Uh, so the introduction of an invasive species or alien species can cause the extinction, uh, near extinction or displacement of native, native species. In the United States alone, there's an estimated 50,000 species that have been introduced. And it's estimated that they, the, these introduced species have caused about $130 billion in damage to natural species. Some classic examples of uh, introduced species causing uh, demise to uh, native species is the introduction of Nile perch and Nile tilapia in Lake Victoria in Africa. Uh, the normal occurring species in this lake was uh, belonged to a group of fish called cichlids, and there was dozens of different cichlid species, and the, these northern perch and natalapia fed on these species and caused some of them uh, to demise, to extinction, and reduced uh, the numbers of others greatly. So here we see the happy uh, fisherman <laughs> beside his, uh, I think this is the Nile perch, that's one big fish, but I think that's a phony photograph. I think he's really standing back. Can't imagine it being that big. And, of course, you can imagine a big fish like that is going to probably eat uh, smaller fish, and, and cichlids were generally uh, anywhere from, uh, uh, I'd say, from 10 centimeters to maybe 20 centimeters big. And the photographs on the right, right show uh, two species of cichlids that once lived. Uh, in Lake Victoria. In Canada, one species, at, and the United States, it, on the prairies, one species that has caused a lot of damage to grazing land is spotted knapweed, which is shown in the photograph. It now infests several million acres of grazing land, and when it's it, uh, growing, uh, cattle will not want to feed in those areas because uh, it, it's a noxious weed. Uh, so it limit and it also limits the growth of other palatable uh, uh, forage uh, crop species, not crop species, natural species, grasses that uh, the livestock eat. And uh, uh, spotted knapweed releases a toxin in the soil that uh, uh, stops other species from growing close to it. Other species of plants. Um, some uh, species have gone extinct, or their numbers have been reduced by things like pollution toxic chemicals, and, and climate change. Uh, acid precipitation caused the decline of a number of, uh, of different species of fish in Canadian lakes. Nitrates from fertilizers uh, have been shown to cause physical uh, abnormalities, abnormalities and death to uh, tadpoles and young frogs. Uh, and more than 25% of the coral reef ecosystems have been destroyed by either uh, pollution, toxic chemicals, or uh, climate change. Uh, one method that is used to collect uh, tropical fish uh, from reefs, from coral reefs, for uh, hobbyists is uh, using dynamite or uh, uh, cyanide. So uh, uh, individuals trying to capture these tropical fish for, for the pet trade will set off dynamite. It kills some of the individuals, but others are just stunned. And they pick them off the surface of the water and then sell them later uh, to, to hobbyists in, in, uh, from pet stores. Some species have disappeared because of uh, exotic pet and plant trade. Uh, millions of birds, fish, amphibians, and reptiles are captured each year for the sale in pet stores. Um, many species are at risk for being gathered, overgathered by wild collectors. An example is the uh, Chisos. Um, 
a mountain hedgehog cactus, uh, uh, almost on the verge of extinction because of illegal uh, collection. So if you're into saltwater tropical fish, you should make sure that your pet stores uh, only stock fish collected without uh, sodium cyanide or dynamite. And here's a picture of this beautiful hedgehog cactus that, have been, that has been over-harvested in, in the United States. Sometimes we've west, uh, wiped out species because we consider them a pest. And uh, one example of that is gray wolves. Um, so pest management can cause extinction or near extinction uh, because we see uh, the species uh, as a pest or, or it's a prey species and then it's after our sheep or our cattle. Uh, so uh, let's cause their demise. Um, sometimes uh, the uh, management of the pest causes uh, indirect effect. So in, in the um, 50s, 1960s, um, uh, we use DDT to uh, kill insect pests uh, that were uh, eating crops, and this had an indirect effect on birds of prey. Um, so they would in eat the insects that were being sprayed, and the DDT would accumulate in their bodies. It didn't cause the, the birds to die, but it caused uh, the uh, hatchlings to die. Uh, either the eggs were too brittle uh, and uh, they they broke before they could hatch, uh, or or uh, the chicks were poisoned. So um, the the gray wolf uh, was was abundant over much of North America, Middle East, Europe, Asia. Uh, now it inhabits a much smaller uh, portion of its former range. And and here we see the uh, diagram representing this this movement of of DDT. Uh, in a predator species. So the example here is DDT spread over a large area of land. It gets into aquatic systems. Uh, it starts to accumulate in zooplankton. The zooplankton are eaten by, eaten by small fish and the amount of DDT in their bodies increases proportionally because they eat a lot of zooplankton. Uh, the zooplankton are eaten, eaten by a bunch uh, larger fish. Ooh, that's a walleye. Uh, and then the bird of prey uh, eats the walleye and uh, by now the amount of DDT getting into the bird's uh, um, body is much higher than what was originally applied in the environment and as I said uh, it caused uh, their eggs to be fragile and uh, uh, caused the, the death of, of young young birds of prey. And of course now uh, D well, DDT was banned in, in 1972 but it's still used in, in parts of the world um, in, in the tropics. Probably the greatest threat to um, species has been our modification of natural habitats. We have completely modified, uh, for example, grasslands into cropland. Uh, deciduous forest has been turned into cropland and uh, settlements and urban habitat. Uh, this, uh, we destroyed the homes of species. And if you destroy the homes of species, they got nowhere to live. And guess what? They end up dying. Uh, most species. Some, some species can survive in in the new human environment that is created. An example is sparrow, for example. Um, so as I said, grasslands have been plowed and wetlands have been drained to grow more crops. Forests have been cut down for lumber, paper products, and uh, often to provide land for agriculture and settlements. So this uh, diagram is from uh, a scientific public publication called the Millennium Assessment and it, it assessed the damage that was going on in uh, habitats. So um, the light tan represents the percentage of habitat lost prior to 1950. So you can see the main, some habitats that really lost a large portion of their, their, their uh, area were things like Mediterranean forest, woodlands and scrub, temperate forest, uh, steppe and woodland, temperate broadleaf forest. Um, the orange uh, shows losses between 1950 and 1990, and then the uh, dark, ready brown represents losses in the future. So you can see that the, the big future losses are going to primarily occur in, in the tropics and subtropics. Um, uh, basically, we're, we're, we've reached our maximum in terms of how much uh, natural land we're, we're consuming uh, in, in the middle latitudes. 
uh, but pop and our populations have stabilized here. But in the subtropics and tropics, uh, populations are still increasing uh, in, in Africa, Southeast Asia, and uh, scientists predict we're going to see big losses uh, in these habitats as um, uh, natural um, um, tropical and subtropical tropical and subtropical habitats um, biomes are converted into uh, cropland uh, and uh, settlements for for humans.